week, the U.S. invasion of Iraq turns 15 years old. Seems like just yesterday it was a baby. Now it's old enough to have a learner's permit, a septum ring, and a skeezy boyfriend pressuring it to do butt stuff. <laughs> Despite overwhelming evidence saying, hey, don't do this war, we did it anyway, killing hundreds of thousands of Iraqi civilians along the way. Even after our fake withdrawal in 2011, the fighting has continued. But unlike the people who live in Iraq, the war's architects have been able to move on with their lives. Remember how much we used to hate this numb nuts for oopsieing us into the war? Thanks to our short attention span and Trump trauma, George W. Bush is now just another early aughts icon ready for a nostalgic reboot, kind of like the Gilmore Girls, if Lorelei ignored Hurricane Katrina and Rory allowed Abu Ghraib to happen. Still not as bad as season seven. Just listen to all the otherwise intelligent liberals who are now pining for the guy we used to call the worst president in history. I have to say this week I've been nostalgic for the good old mm. days of George W. Mm. Bush. President I'm so sorry, Trump. President Bush. I never thought I'd pray for the day that you were president again. Aww. Miss the guy who started the Iraq war. I'm sorry, I couldn't even hear what that last harpy was saying over all the shrillness. Of course, Bush isn't our only new conservative bay. Lots of anti-Trump neocons have reluctantly wandered into our camp, and like the self-loathing doormats we are, we've readily embraced them. David, from uh, you announced uh, you're voting for Hillary Clinton. You make your best choice from, from bad alternatives. Max Boot, uh, who are you voting for? Hillary Clinton, and I never thought I would be saying that. Bill Kristol, a uh, long, lifelong conservative, tweeted, the GOP tax bill is bringing out my inner socialist, the sex scandals are bringing out my inner feminist, Donald Trump and Roy Moore are bringing out my inner liberal. What is happening? Careful, Bill, don't sprain your arm patting yourself on the back for your wokeness. <laughs> yes, of course it's good to have conservatives who speak out against Trump, but remember that 15 years ago, just one Stranger Things kid ago, these reasonable conservatives were doing everything they could to send us guns a-blazing into Iraq. What are the consequences if the U.S. does not finish off uh, this uh, uh, Saddam Hussein as the second step in the war on terrorism? It would mean that the president, having declared a global war on terrorism, didn't follow through, didn't take out the most threatening uh, terrorist state in the, in, in the world. Yes, after 9-11, Crystal's magazine kept pressuring Bush to go to war, culminating in its late 2002 cover story, What Are You, George, A Pussy? <laughs> Meanwhile, as a speechwriter for Bush, David Frum helped sell the war by coining the president's most iconic phrase. There's square dancing and trains and obviously balloon hats. No, his other most iconic <laughs> phrase. States like these and their terrorist allies constitute an axis of evil. Look, we all made mistakes in the early 2000s, whether it was marketing a disastrous war or appearing as Cinnabon cashier in The Love Guru. <laughs> So don't get too self-righteous, liberals, because we also sucked. More than 100 Democratic lawmakers voted in favor of invading Iraq. Perhaps worst of all was the willingness of the press to accept the White House's justification for war. Today, reporters are martyrs, enduring attacks by the president and lies from furious West Wing radishes. <laughs> but back in 2003, they weren't quite so tough. Not the president looking very much like a, a jet you know, a high-flying jet star. Americans love having a guy as president, a guy who has a little swagger, is physical. Women like a guy as president. Check it out. And women like this war. He looks great in a military uniform. He looks great in that cowboy costume he wears when he yep. goes out west. Easy there, Chris. Take a cold shower and <laughs> save the cowboy fantasies for hardball after dark. <laughs> no. This has been a fun trip down memory lane, but for a lot of people, this isn't history. The actions of Cowboy McJetstar and his enablers are still actively destroying people's lives. And don't forget that it was the decider and his team who decided to disband the Iraqi army, giving a group of armed, unemployed, and disgruntled soldiers the opportunity to found a scrappy little startup that would one day be called ISIS. All of the adorkable memes in the world cannot undo the damage he did. So now, Fifteen years later, what have we learned from the stupidest war ever? Apparently nothing, because we might be making the same mistake all over again. The administration reportedly planning to replace National Security Advisor H.R. McMaster with Ambassador John Bolton. You might only know John Bolton as that guy on the news who looks like Wilford Brimley hit a witch with a car and she cursed him to get thinner. <laughs> 
But he was also one of the top cheerleaders for the invasion of Iraq, and he's made a virtual career of going on cable news and showing off his rage boner for a certain other Middle Eastern country. Our goal should be regime change in Iran. You've written an op-ed today in the New York Times to stop Iran's bomb bomb Iran. Are we better but off if attacking if you're Iran worried or having Iran have nuclear facilities? I think we're better off attacking. Okay, two things. First, congratulations, Chris Matthews, on keeping it in your pants this time. And second, John Bolton has been calling for us to bomb Iran forever. I believe going all the way back to the 1950s. <laughs> And now he's got the desiccated beef jerky-like ear of our impressionable president ready to lead us into Iraq 2, Iran, the most unwanted sequel since Donald Trump Jr. <laughs> but does Bolton really have a chance of getting a job in the Trump administration? According to the Washington Post, during the transition, several Trump's associates said they thought that John Bolton's brush-like mustache was one of the factors that handicapped him in the sweepstakes for Secretary of State. And now we can only pray because we're just one case of mustache blight from starting the next disastrous war. We'll be right back.